to conclude uh, this presentation, this uh, webinar, um, I will just go uh, quickly on the data dissemination and the data communication. And once again, and it's a, it's a final one, uh, I have a small, um, a small poll. I can maybe enable it. So you can go to the same uh, website. And so it's a cloud, a word, uh, word cloud, uh, and it's to gather what you could have uh, when you are when we are talking about data communication, uh, what are the main issues and the, maybe the points the, to watch, the maybe blocking factors that you encounter in your, in your, in your job, in your agency. Uh, what are the points that you you would like to share with us and um, the elements that uh, block you when you want to to enhance the visualization of uh, the data that you produce or the data that you want to share with the stakeholders Normally, it's still the same link. I would, uh, I would be okay. I would be glad if you had no no issues. <laughs> okay, I already have a few answers. Okay, uh, methodological. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, we do have uh, in our. Um, Agency, for example, uh, the issue of um, to be sure that the methodology between our uh, behind sorry behind our uh, data is well understood by the partners. Uh, the complexity of the data that we want to provide, of course, the availability of uh, data sources, data sets. Sometimes it's uh, blocked. I mentioned uh, at the beginning the industrial sector, for example, which is a uh, withholding sometimes uh, data for good reasons, of course, but uh, still it's uh, hard to provide a good analysis if we don't have the data. Uh, yeah, I see management, it's interesting because um, it's, uh, it's, it might seem like overpowered to have a management uh, process or management plan of uh, data communication, but uh, as well as uh, we would have like a communication plan it's interesting to have a um, um, management uh, plan uh, for data communications. Okay, availability once again, company, complexity sharing. Okay, thank you for this. We go on maybe with the presentation. Someone just added, um, Yes, others. Okay. Okay. So we have spent the two last two hours uh, looking at how to to analyze the uh, users and their needs, how to present the data well by using the various types of uh, graphs, and I pro I shared with you some key example of. Uh, from our agency, uh, using Orkai, our observatory, using our Sunkist, using our territory platform. And now uh, for the last uh, 15 minutes, maybe uh, 10 minutes, uh, we'd like to, to see how it's, what, what we have uh, to share with you about the communication process and how to, to have a good communication process. So it's hard to share because it's, it will be very specific to what are the projects you are working in and uh, what are the data that you are trying to, to share. So I just have some like key lessons that we gathered from our experience. Um, 
when you when you are working on data visualization, of course, you are going to put a lot of effort about the data, the quality of the data, the quality of the methodology. But if you do not communicate well, uh, all this effort will be wasted. Um, for example, I, I talked about a lot about the, the report that we create uh, for all territories of our region that gathered a lot of indicators. So creating this report take a lot of time, but it was uh, it, it's a lot of, of time that we know is useful because we know that these reports are used by local authorities and we have feedbacks and we know so we know that uh, it's important for them to have a precise report for their territory with uh, numbers and data for their territories. So uh, wasting a little, not wasting, but putting so much effort into these reports is, is okay because we know that the communication is uh, good and that they will receive the information that we want to, to share with them. So that's why we encourage you to have a uh, debate and uh, meetings and inquiries with uh, territories and end users to be sure that they are going to use and they are going to, to have access to what they need. And so, as I mentioned before, there's no not one best method that works for every case. So you have to, to try and uh, to make like feedbacks and loops to be sure that um, you have reached your end users. Uh, when I talk about uh, our own um, uh, case, uh, we have a lot of uh, like channels that we can use to transmit our information. And uh, if we, if the end user doesn't understand how, what we are sharing with the he. Uh, if of course they, will, they won't be able to use to use the data or the information for their own purposes, so that's uh, communication issue is uh, is really is is why it's why it's really important and uh, it's why I guess you all have and we do in Oradezo have a communication team which is able to help. Uh, I, I have Marlene here with me, for example, which is. Um, able to help on these communication issues and is always uh, willing to, to give information on, or tips on how to enhance our communication and how to, to present information in the better way uh, for end users. So I just created a quick list of all the tools that you can use to disseminate your data. Of course, emails, newsletters, uh, that are read by your part stakeholders and to be sure that they are aware of uh, the, la the last uh, uh, development in their area. Uh, you can use, of course, social med media, local uh, radio or TV or newspaper that can uh, help uh, um, present the data in, in, in kind of uh, um, most, uh, when you want to reach, sorry, the general public. You can have some analysis report or executive, executive summaries uh, when you want to talk to local authorities. Of course, uh, in some cases, uh, I know our uh, the team in our agency we, who is responsible for waste uh, data uh, are often calling uh, the local authorities or the services, uh, the companies, uh, to be sure that uh, the data are the, of the good quality and that they have the, the right element, uh, elements to share with the stakeholders. Uh, you can create websites, you can create presentations or webinars to present the, la the, the latest uh, reports that you published. Of course, you can publish the raw data sets. I, as I mentioned before, we do this uh, very often to be sure that uh, when the person uh, is uh, visiting our website, she she have access to, she has access to to our reports she has access to our data visualization tools but we want to be sure that he, she also has access to the raw data set because she would like maybe to to create new representations to maybe to to include uh, the information in in uh, in its own uh, in her own uh, reports so that's why we we try to as much as possible to provide the data sets so it's sometimes hard because we have to, to argue with uh, partners, with uh, 
stakeholders that provide the data. And uh, we have to, to argue because we, we want to be sure that uh, they understand why we are publishing the data and why it's not uh, like uh, offending or I don't know. So yeah, but I, we, we do think in Ora that it's important to publish data sets. And uh, finally, you can organize workshops on uh, specific themes. Uh, for example, in, uh, in our team, we organize work, we organized a workshop uh, a few days ago about mobility to, so people uh, from local um, authorities uh, and the technical services uh, of the cities are able to, to take, to grasp our tools and to make the best use uh, of it. And we also received the uh, feedback uh, from teams and so on. So when you, ha when you see the, that there are so many um, uh, communication channels, you, you, could see, you could say, uh, how could I choose between all of them? Uh, there are multiple criteria that you can take into account uh, to choose. Um, you can take the, the time frame you want to communicate. Is it like regular, uh, yearly, uh, every six months? Is it every week? And for example, if you are publishing newsletters, uh, it's good to have like regular public, public publication because people will get used, used to it. They will be sure that they have like the, la the latest information and that they will be up to date. Uh, but so in some cases, uh, you want to create like a lot of communication around an event, which is like a specific event. So you don't need to communicate regularly. Uh, it depends, of course, on the budget uh, that you have. If you want to communicate, uh, if you want to develop a full website, you will need sorry, you will need a lot of money, as I mentioned, uh, for a territory project. It depends on the knowledge and the expertise that you have on your team. Uh, I mentioned Marlene, who has uh, some expertise I don't about communication, so I'm glad uh, she's here because I won't, I won't, I wouldn't be able to do it uh, to do what she does uh, about communication. And uh, you need, of course, uh, to be to to adapt your communication and your data dissemination channel to the needs of the young, end user. If you are talking to the general public you won't use the same uh, channel than you would use for local authorities or elected uh, people. Because uh, when you're talking to general public, uh, they, are, they might be not be willing to go on the specific uh, weird website and to read a long methodological uh, notes. So you need to adapt uh, your way of communicating to the end users. And finally, to choose your mode of uh, communication, you need to think of uh, um, uh, what I call the replication requirements. Um, for example, I mentioned uh, the, the report that we publish annually uh, about the, the data on climate and energy consumption for every territory. So in this case, we know that we will do this at least annually. So we need to find a way so that it's it's easy in our team to update with the latest data, the latest uh, graphs, the latest elements. So we need to create a report that can be generated automatically using all graphs, etc. So, for example, I'm talking about this report. We use LaTeX uh, programming language, uh, not programming language, but uh, system, and we use a lot of R uh, scripts and Python scripts that uh, make it possible to publish a new version of, uh, this, uh, of this report, uh, like in a few weeks uh, after the latest data are available. So that are the main criteria that you can use to, to be sure that uh, you are taking the, using the, good, the right ch channel. And of course, uh, you can use uh, more than one. And of, and of course, you can uh, change your way of communicating if you if you see that uh, what you choose what you chose is not uh, adapted to your situation. And uh, of course, sometimes uh, just communicating the data is not enough, and that's why we created, for example, applications like a territory website. We create uh, some specific events uh, in uh, uh, real meetings 
We, can, we have created uh, serious games. Uh, we have a colleague who created a serious game called Clima Story. You can have access to the website uh, of the agency that described the project. And the Clima Story is a project that helps um, local authorities um, plan uh, their adaptation, adaptation to climate change. So they have a map and they have a lot of uh, small cards uh, describing actions that can uh, apply on the specific issues uh, on, the, on, the, on the territory. And so they can, uh, um, using uh, notes and or other external reports, they can discuss on what they want to implement in that territory. So you can go way further, just uh, way beyond only just data and graphs and reports. And you can, of course, uh, create research uh, articles or research reports if you want. And uh, yeah, that could be interesting uh, in some cases to have like different uh, channels than like common channels. And um, yes, and uh, of course, during all this data dissemination process, you will meet uh, difficulties because uh, even if you try your hardest uh, it's hard for non-expert people to, to dive in some uh, energy-related data, climate change-related data. Of course, they will have their own biases. They will have their own uh, beliefs. They will have their own uh, willingness to, to accept what you are trying to communicate. So it's never enough sometimes what you are trying to do and the efforts that you will put into communicating. Um, and of course, there is all, there are also hypothesis choices that you made uh, that you made to to make the best um, data and the data reports that will lead to differences with the other tools that can be highlighted by people claiming that you you have wrong data and then you are trying to mislead them but uh, you still have to to try and uh, hopefully it will work uh, for example uh, just to finish this presentation i wanted to share two uh, Recent feedbacks we received on uh, our platform. Uh, we put a lot of effort on this platform and we received two uh, very nice feedbacks. For example, I find the tool extra easy to use and the graphic presentation are very didactic. So it's use useful for us and for our elected representatives. And a very nice one. I was absolutely blown away by the territory tool. So hopefully by putting on the efforts uh, I described before by trying to be precise, trying to be cautious to what are the limits of our uh, data, data handling processes. Um, you will receive nice feedbacks and you, you will be able to, to reach uh, the, the people you are trying to contact and to carry the messages you are trying to carry and to have the impact that you want to have. And uh, that's it for me. I'm just uh, just finished. We are a little bit early, but uh, I think that's good. And if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, ask them now. If you want to contact me later on, if you have to want to have some more details about the the, the various uh, elements I presented or about the feedbacks I gave you from the, our experience in uh, our um, agency, uh, feel free to contact me or to contact uh, the the mail address we sent, uh, we, we used to send you mails. Uh, I'm glad uh, that Energy Watch uh, program uh, subsided uh, this, um, these uh, courses uh, that uh, were uh, given in the last few years. I think it's very nice that we have these peer-to-peer uh, -peer exchanges uh, throughout Europe about uh, what we face, uh, diffi the difficulties that we face and uh, the yeah, you know, the, the efforts we have to put into our work. So thank you for attending. And uh, I hope uh, everything was uh, clear enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adrian Lucien. Thank you very much, Mathieu. Thank you.